Howdy folks, it's Not Jay from Not Jay's Tabletop Gaming, and this video is another catch up with McMurray and his Victorian sci fi floating ships or flying ships. Uh, he's got a couple of them painted up now, and uh, he wants us to jump in with them and take a look. So here we go. All right, cool. So, a little hobby update on the Victorian airships, real quick. It's McMurray over here. Um, I know there's been a, a honest to me, shockingly um, positive, ignore the messy workspace real quick. I just got in an order for Bull Glory. Uh, an overwhelmingly positive uh, and quite vigorous in terms of the comments response to the Victorian airship stuff, which is super cool to, uh, to hear and see both on over here on not J Chronicles of Not Jay, as well as over on World Wardrobe Plays World War II, where we've had the kind of the play testing with the rules over here. We're keeping kind of the hobby stuff going. We got the rules play testing over there. But anyways, so go watch the video uh, of the rules over there. But in the meantime, I wanted to show you guys just kind of an update of the painting on those three airships that you guys saw in that playthrough. Um, the first one is that bigger one that we had floating around. For whatever reason, this just seemed like it needed to be accented in blue. So, it's well, because a, blue is the best color. Blue accents on it. Yeah, we've got the most of it. I decided I wanted to make kind of a wooden construction, which whatever, that's fine. Uh, so we've got the kind of black, old school cast iron looking uh, fittings. Same with the the boiler. Then we got blue accents. I didn't do a whole lot inside the cabin. That's fine. That roof is going to stay on there most of the time. Um, what I really like about this kit, honestly, is the bottom where they've got the wood paneling. And then I, again, did it out in that black iron kind of look. Um, at some point in time, these wings are going to get some love like they did on that big aphid class gunship. But for now, that's where we're looking. The one thing I still need to do is add magnets or steel plates for the guns. Uh, this is actually the the uh, magnet mount that came with it, as well as these two fat magnets on the back here. So if I really want to, I think I can get those in there. But then that's going to kind of restrict what I can actually put there. So maybe not. We'll figure something out um, up here in terms of getting that to magnetize. Back here, we're going to put a standard magnet mount like I've got on a bunch of the other boats. These three don't have them on there yet. Cause I got all excited and painted them up before gluing them on. Cause I wasn't sure where I wanted to put them. But at the end of the video, I do have a, uh, an example of how that kind of, how I'm mounting my, my guns and my magnets. So there you go. A little bit of dry brushing, you know, a little bit of stuff, a little bit of slop with that blue on there, but whatever. It was painted by 17 year olds in the Victorian era, you know, looks good. I like yeah, it. So, the idea was to get something that visually would look good until you got this close to it. And once you get this close to it, I don't really care because I'm going to tell you to put my model down. So there you go. So in the back there, you're going to have a uh, indirect mortar mount? Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about that. I need to figure some stuff out with that. But yes, there is going to be an indirect mortar mounted here for the most part because that just seems cool and weird. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then up here, we'll have a, a machine gun probably of some sort. Right. But Looks yeah, good. So there's I like one. It. I like it a lot. Uh, the other two little guys that you saw in there are quite simple, but I kind of like them being quite simple. We got the the machinery spaces being you know black with a little bit of gray, whatever it is sloshed on them. I might wind up painting like you know squadron markings or something on the tail. That super duper seems like a World War One thing, so a little early for this. Mainly, I guess, because there weren't really vehicles in squadrons seen too much outside of the navy and there those sort of highlights weren't necessarily a thing but anyways same basic idea we've got the the machinery spaces painted everything else on here is just plain wood uh i'll probably wind up hitting the rails a darker color just for again the kind of shiggle factor i might wind up putting some paint onto these couple rivets that are in here We'll kind of figure that out, play it by ear, see how it goes. Um, but honestly, the the simple thing kind of works. I, I, I enjoy how these look simply. I really caked the uh, the muck on on the main deck so it looks like they're traveled a bunch. You know, it's a these are your your day to day patrol 
whatever airships. So I wanted them to look a little on the dirtier side than maybe that big guy. Um, and I think that came out okay. Again, these do not have the magnets on them yet. I'm still working on if I want to put just one magnet in the front or a magnet in the front and then one in the middle. Um, so again, that's just how stuff's going to have to get figured out. I'm not sure yet. We'll see on those. I think what I'm going to wind up doing though is just spraying those strike plates like a gray color and then gluing them on. So it looks like they're just, you know, the, the hard points for mounting weapons like was being yeah, built over time. Then you can put whatever needs to be put on there. Exactly. Or not put anything on there. It's, yeah. it's you know. Dependent on the mission. Yep, exactly. So there's those other two. Again, the idea is that these are really simple. These aren't necessarily going to be the eye grabbers in a game. I figured the, the larger slash more complex or flagship-esque um, airships are. I might spend a little more time on them. These things were the epitome of we're just going to get them out. They're going to go. Um, like I said, I, it, it is bugging me a little bit that there's nothing on the tail, but aside from the railings, and then I do need to wait, figure out some way to set them apart. So that's where I'm getting probably going to have, uh, some markings on the tail of some sort, whether that's just stripes or what we'll figure that out. Who knows? We'll burn that bridge when we come to it, but there, there are those go. two, um, with regards to, we had a bunch of questions about the weapon mounting system, uh, and though that's fair, that's very good questions. Here's a ship that's unprimed with a bunch of weapons mounted. Um, you can see these that's being held almost a vertical, not quite, yeah. but well over 45 degrees. And the only one that's even moving is this substantially larger uh, gun. And that's entirely a metal gun, so that's, that's rather weighty. All it is is just one rare earth magnet drilled into the pedestal base. Boom. Right there, you can take it off, put it back on. These little maxims were a little tricky because there's not a whole lot of room in that cruciform base they're on, but more than enough to get them mounted there. Again, we got a Nordenfeld here on the back. Same same sad song. Boom. Right there. Um, Very good. Very cool. These, again, I don't know. Some of them I've got primed. The two big guys that I've got, the two AFIT-ish uh, guys, I primed with over the magnets. Like I said, I'm going to spray paint some of the magnets and put them on and just kind of get the determination of, do I want them to look metallic or do I want them to blend in with the deck? Who knows? Um, maybe it'll vary ship to ship. I'm not sure. But I, again, I know we had a lot of questions about, oh, how does that work? Does it work well? Do they fit? Do they stay? Not been a problem at all. I haven't, I don't know where I stuck the four inch gun, the really big guy. Um, but I did magnetize that and it's stuck in place just fine. I don't know if I flip it over, if it's going to move, but that's not a super duper uh, concern of mine, but Hey, for shiggles, let's give it a try. What do you think? Oh, yep. All right. So this big guy fell off. These other three didn't even move though. So that's pretty cool. It's a good way to mount stuff, I guess. Yeah. Uh, kind of pissed off that on other projects, I hadn't thought of that, but yeah. So there you go. Again, I know we had folks asking about, how I do those. Also on these, it kind of pissed me off. So I flipped those little tail veins over. I don't know. Who knows? I like it. Yeah. It just seemed like a way to, to differentiate some stuff. Like I said, I got some miniatures in, so that's cool. Uh, yeah. More of those light sort of guns, a whole bunch of those. Again, these are all old glories, Houston colonial guns or whatever range. Here's a, so those are light guns. These are slightly larger guns of a very, very similar variety. Um, but yeah, it's basically going from an ordnance three pound, quick firing three pounder to a six pounder. So like most British, you know, guns and ordnance at this period. Oh, well, we can just make it bigger, right? Sure. So that's what they yeah. do. So it's a little bigger. A um, couple of those. Again, we talked about the light guns, a ton of these additional maxims i'm a huge i just really like these figures that model that's this thing i'm a big fan i've got one on that little african queen looking vessel that i've got and i i, I love it can't get enough um i did order a couple one pound pom-pom guns on usually well okay so here we can talk about talk about the how it's our indirect fire mortars they didn't come on ship mounts. They came on traditional split trail mounts. 
So I'm going to need to figure out how I'm going to get that to isolate. You know what I can do is just open this bag and pour it out. Um, so there's what that looks like. It's a pretty cool little gun, early pneumatic stuff. So you can see where it's got the barrel and then the um, pneumatic recoil control. So that's pretty slick. But again, not on a ship mount. I'm going to have to figure out how to jerry rig a ship mount. Hopefully, if anybody in the comments knows of some stuff I can 3D print to make a good just pedestal mount like I've got on the rest of these, by all means, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to have to figure something out. We'll figure that out. It'll be good. Um, probably still assemble these and maybe leave a magnet on them or something so that if I wanted to play with them on the ground, uh, I could pick this guy up, set it down onto one of those carriages. Um, but yeah, so there's a couple of those uh, that came in. Again, a little disappointed. It was in the same range as all the stuff that's on naval mounts, but that wasn't not 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 a problem. I also got a couple one pounder pom poms, which I was really excited. I was like, cool. That I, I I knew from the pictures. Okay, it's going to be on a trail, uh, on a traditional carriage. I need to you know figure out a way to mount those on pedestals, knowing I was going to already probably have to figure that out anyways kind of uh defrayed the the oh no of needing to deal with those mountain howitzers but of course it's still me so with my luck whoop, the one pounder pom-poms are cast onto the trails so of course that's ah, okay that just means i've got a couple of them that'll be tottering around a battlefield um for ordinary Victorian sci-fi stuff. These should be great at dropping, you know, light vehicles and walkers and stuff because they're still shooting a one-pound projectile. Now, um, now he, here's a thought for you. Uh-huh. Um, if I remember, some of the earliest traversing guns on uh, ironclads and whatnot were on... Big turntables? Uh, yeah. Yeah, like open barbette style stuff? Yeah, yeah I, that might be what I wind up doing for the howitzers. These guys, I'm just going to toss onto the table. I'm perfectly happy doing that. These yeah. are kind of a, well, we'll give it a shot. That'd be cool. Um, yes, I have thought about that with uh, some of these guys. Actually, some of the brigade models, um, Ironclad or Victorian airships that I have, some of the biggest ones have great big open barbettes. Um, so that's certainly a, a possibility and something that I've looked into. Um, ooh, here's another cool kind of weird thing that I've got specifically. I ordered these to go on the back of the back mounts right here on these two vessels. Yeah. Um, but they are Colt 1895, you know, potato diggers, right? Oh, yeah. so big, wild, heavy machine guns. They come on a tripod base. I'm going to have to figure out a different way to, uh, to mount these. They're probably going to wind up going onto a washer or something. That is then that then has a magnet magnet sitting on the top of, because uh, these I really want to make. A they're they're a little too big to just put on one of those three quarter inch guys. As you can see, that's a bit of a long trail on that tripod. Right. But that's so that's what that what that'll look like when it's completed, and then the crew character the crew is pretty cool. It's a seated crewman to sit on this little little guy and just. So I figured that as a heavy machine gun would be a pretty cool uh, kind of stern chaser for this guy, given that otherwise you've got this wide open stern that's undefended. It seems like, yeah, that's definitely a place to put a stern gun. Um, this is the nominally U.S. Navy, so frigates, baby. Um, additionally, another cool thing, additionally in that pack, were two of those 1895s, but then also this wild, wild thing. Um, it's a dynamite gun, right? So the U.S. experimented with a couple, like, kind of shore bombardment-esque. Well, they were relegated to shore bombardment. Uh, the U.S. had a dynamite cruiser called the USS Vesuvius that I've been trying to find a model of for a long time. It basically had two fixed tubes in the bow that fired great big quantities of dynamite the issue is the nitroglycerin and early dynamite was relatively um volatile we'll say so trying to shoot it with gunpowder that sort of jarring effect would probably blow it up in the breach so they used 
compressed air to pneumatically fire some absurd amount of dynamite, which had the drawback of being relatively short range, but the huge advantages of massive firepower, like ex- high explosive firepower, and being pretty damn quiet. But anyways, same sort of idea, but on the ground, obviously didn't pan out past the Spanish-American War, but still super cool, super weird, good stuff for uh, a ground-based weapon in this in this period, especially as we get into, well, it's supposed to be the weird stuff. So there you go. There you can see the size of the wheel that'll be on there. And so those are pretty slick. Um, the artillery crews that come with those are, like I said, U.S. Spanish American War artillery crews. They've got the slouch hats and stuff, which is just too cool. I think that's going to be just the aesthetic for most of these guys. I also got a pack of just artillery crew from the Spanish American war. So those are all wearing that same slouch hat um, sort of thing along with the boots. That should be really cool. That should provide me. There's 30 guys in here. I think that should get pretty darn close. If I include the, the couple spare guys I'll have out of the crews for this dynamite gun in two eighteen ninety eight or 95 should be enough to crew both of these. And then that, big monitor so that should be fun um i don't know what i'm going to use for marine style stuff but we'll burn that bridge when we come to it uh i have i got another pack of british guys this is a really cool one i think this is from the boer war pack that they make but it's infantry command so basically half of them have pistols and half of them have rifles And they're all various command roles. They work really well for airship-based stuff because it's just weird. I don't know. Um, But a lot of dynamic poses, cool stuff. There you go. You can see one of the the higher command figures right there in the front. He's got his helmet under his arm. He's doing some some higher command type stuff. But good pack. Uh, From there, last but not least, we got some kind of just weird stuff, some pulpy stuff. Uh, Because like I said, at some point in time, I've got a bunch of boar figures. Uh, There's just going to be some, some, a faction that's probably just angry dudes, angry people, right? So you got some, some boar figures that are just civilian looking guys. And then naturally you need merchant marine guys to go along with that. So these are just some unarmed guys, as well as a captain figure that very likely looks familiar from that video over on wardrobe plays world war II's channel he was piloting the big airship but these are unarmed i have all actually have these same models armed so that'll also be cool for smaller fistful lead battles or games where you've got just random citizens wandering around and then all of a sudden whoop nope these four, four guys all of a sudden we have another player boom they're in the game they're armed but anyways cool just kind of merchant sailors good stuff gonna be quick to paint up easy to paint up not a problem And then these guys I took a bit of a gamble on. Um, There's no picture, which, whatever, not a big deal. Again, Old Glory's dealing with some website issues. They're on a temporary website, not the one that they prefer. But anyways, so these are the Amazon Steamer crew. They are some angry-looking dudes. They've all got rifles. Most of them have machetes as well. Um, Again, those civilian guys are going to need – those guys don't look – sky piratey i don't know what 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 we're looking for but again just a random pack pretty fun um simple good stuff a lot of guns a lot of guns a lot of drilling and and magnetizing to do but that's okay we're getting through this pretty quick it's going good i'm gonna prime up probably these uh u.s vessels gonna do those in a pretty cool camo or tan with white um deck houses and stuff kind of the opposite of the great white fleet but these are more built in that again steamship sort of style so that's probably how that's going to work that i'm going to do with you know a wide underbelly and everything and then everything on top is going to be tan probably not but who knows we're probably going to do the the steamship vibe but anyways um that's that's kind of the hobby update again we've got a number of painted airships we painted up everything that we used in that that game 
over on Wardrobe Place World War II. There are all of those. Those are fun. Those are delightful. Those were quick and, and fun to paint. And we're going to be rapidly moving on. That's four out of, I think, 11 that are painted now, counting that big aphid. So Nice. So yeah. um, you're, you're hoping to have all this ready to go for March to Victory? Yes. I don't know how big the table sizes will be, which will probably determine the number of boats that we get onto the, the number of airships we get onto the table. Uh, wardrobe and I realized rather quickly that with three, we were pretty, we could probably maybe, maybe double that on a four by six. Um, but then especially once we got larger airships like this onto the table, the biggest airship we used was this thing, which is about the same size. Yeah. Um, but then those, those guys from crossover miniatures, those are big. Those are big. Uh, right. Those are definitely Royal Navy. Hey, we're here sort of things right um and with the slightly smaller versions of those still on their way from ironclad miniatures god i hope those get here soon those are somewhere in the maelstrom of international shipping uh we could really actually i forgot about those two from ironclads that might put us up to uh 13 those are smaller like i said those are only eight inches long um but they are in that same style you know, it, it, it could be interesting. We'll see how it works. Uh, still want to have enough room to maneuver and then have random effects um, sure. coming through. So, like I said, we'll see. I don't know how many airships we'll have on the table. But as of right now, we certainly have enough to support. I certainly have enough to support the four airships that I have painted easily. And there are more being painted every day. So, um, yes, we should have a pretty good showing at March to Victory for anyone who wants to jump in and play outstanding uh, maybe we'll even get um a couple of these guys prepped up into gun platforms or something like that yeah with stuff hanging hot, hot, air, hot air balloon yeah whether hot that's thing. you know just a hot what i was thinking was just a hot air balloon with then you know this thing or something else Pro that's kind of absurd looking probably one of these hanging underneath it yeah. With just enough room on a platform for three, four guys. Uh, That'd be cool. Yeah, right. Exactly. So, um, like I said, we'll have to see if if it gets ridiculous enough that I want to put like four of these supporting the corners of a platform. Whatever. We'll figure that out. Um, but in the meantime, I think I want to focus mostly on getting these airships ready to rock. Right. And in fighting shape. I should have all, I have all the guns that I need now for that. All the guns that I need now are here. Uh, once I get them all magnetized, I'm going to take them downstairs, put them on a piece of flat stock that I've got, and just spray them all with gray. I think all the guns are going to be virtually the same. With them being modular on the ships, I don't want to paint them specific to factions because then if I wind up, oh, no, I want to put it on this, that's going to look real dumb. Real dumb. Yeah. So stuff like the Nordenfeld, there's a couple of these, the Maxims. I might wind up putting, you know, brass uh, cooling shrouds on these, something like that. That always looked cool. That's what I did on that smaller little uh, traditional boat that I have. But we'll see. The naval guns themselves are probably all going to be just a battleship gray color. As well as, I'll probably prime them all that so that the pedestals will be that same color. But Right. Yep. So that's where, that's where we're at right now, man. Uh, it's exciting. Stuff's coming in. Stuff's coming in. Stuff is coming in notably with enough time to actually get it ready, which is the nice part. Yeah, that's. Th there have been so many times where I have been working on a project for a convention, and I'm I'm literally finishing it up the morning the the convention is supposed to start. Yeah, you know, you're you're praying that whole week that it's going to get in, and then it does. Um, so like I said, we, I've got more than enough stuff currently to easily run that. Uh, I put in an order to, uh, North star today. Just if it comes in cool, we'll have some extra cool character figures. Um, if not, that's fine. We'll have it for the next go around. Um, I'm, what I'm trying to do is get 
as many of these done as I can so that when my ironclad miniatures order comes in, I can just immediately jump into that with a clear slate, get those two smaller airships primed up because those should be really cool to play with. And then right. there's some miniatures coming from them that I will show you guys when they come in that I think are going to be really, really fun specifically for the airship stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Outstanding. Yeah. Any other, any questions, anything you want to see yeah. again or closer up, anything like that? Yeah. Everything's looking good. Um, I can't wait to actually see them in person. Uh, I'm sure I'll see them before March to victory in person, but uh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. It's, <clears throat> yeah. If you're going to be in town next weekend, I'll bring over to Todd's. Yeah. Yeah. Outstanding. Yeah. So, well, oh, thanks for uh, sharing with us on this. Here's a question for our viewers. Not all of, since I'm using airships from three or four different companies, not all of them use the same flying bases. Because of that, some of them are clear, some of them are not. I'm not going to have some clear, some not, some MDF, some, you know. Question for you viewers and, and for you, Chris. Yes. When I paint these, do you think just doing a matte black to not distract from anything on on these posts is good or sure somebody suggested a sky blue i'm not super sold on the sky blue idea uh, but that's something for for you guys to discuss so, argue about in the comments get into knife fights <clears throat> so here <coughs> here's my thought for you do one of each as a test that's fair see which one you like i'm inclined i'm inclined to go with just the black that's what I did with the small scale airships that I have, and I really liked it. Yeah. If it's black oh. and it's matte enough, if you, I'm going to build up the base. The bases aren't just going to be matte black. The bases are going to be, you know, textured and they'll have. Right. Those I'm still deciding if I want to do like the red Mars type thing or what. But. Right. They will certainly be textured. It's the, the posts that I'm. I'm wondering slash curious about because if they're black, really the only parts that you see are down here. Once you've got the ship on them, um, unless you're at eye level, you really only catch the very rim. And right. at that point in time, it seems like just having them black might be the simplest, easiest way to keep them unobtrusive. But like I said, we'll see. I like to do one of each and see how you like them. But yeah, like I said, discuss in the comments. Um, that ought to be an entertaining, <laughs> an entertaining discussion to say the least. To but, say the least, yes. But yeah, so dear viewers, hope you enjoyed it. That's an update. We'll keep doing these every every you know week or so, a couple weeks, um, as we get more and less done. But there we go, guys. It's coming right along. We covered the magnets. We covered some random stuff. You guys saw the painted stuff. Like I said, for gameplay, go over to Wardrobe Plays World War II. Once you're over there, we'll get another gameplay video posted up. I'll be directing people back over here to see the uh, the development. Seemed like a good way to share content and views with uh, both the channels that I really enjoy. Yeah. So I'll uh, I'll find I'll find the video over there. Grab the link and drop it into the description here. Yeah, there's a couple of them. There's a couple. There's one where it's just two of these guys. And then there's one where it's all three of the painted ships that you saw. I actually have another one of these guys. Which had where I put the funnel up here. Uh -huh. So it looks like the machinery space might be here. Uh, okay. Maybe that's the one where I'll just put one magnet center mounted. And maybe it can be a bigger gun that mainly shoots to either side. Well, I yeah. think we're going to do that. We're going to have a magnet up here. And a magnet right here. And then I need to figure out making some sort of plank, apparently, to come off the side for errant Victorian space knights. Exactly. Yeah. Because they get out of line sometimes. They do. And what are you going to do with them? Space pirates are going to make them walk the plank, baby. That's how it there works. There you go. That's how it works. Sounds good. Sounds good. Well, thanks again for joining us tonight or today or whenever you're watching this. Um, 
we will have uh, more updates like this. And, and this just this kind of fell in line along with the video our, our the live show we had on Wednesday. Um, unfortunately, McMurray was not able to be there with us uh, to you know talk to us about what he's been doing. So here you go. You get to see what uh, what McMurray uh, has been doing. So and he's been doing some great work. So. Um, Keep up the good work, man, and uh, hope to have you on the show, you know, the live show sometime soon, as always, you know. Oh, absolutely. And viewers, holler if you want if you want to see more of this stuff, what you want to see, if you want to see me build some stuff, do some weird stuff, let me know. We'll yeah, figure we'll it make out. it happen. That we will. All right. So take care, man, and we'll uh, talk to you later. Yep, be good, guys. And that's the update from McMurray. Uh, those ships are looking good. Definitely is going to be fun uh, playing with them at March to Victory. Uh, remember, if uh, you're in the Kansas City area, the end of March, last weekend of March, come to March to Victory. Meet me, McMurray, uh, the Baron, at uh, at the convention. The Baron, of course, being Jay Wiley from Real Wiley Games. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, mark to vich- March to Victory dot net. Uh, come check us out. And until next time, we'll see you on the flip side.